So globally, now don't get scared by this kind of complicated slide, but I wanted to share this idea with you. The research onion came out in 2015, so it's kind of new. And then it was terrific because it took all these different layers of research and put it into one single graphic, which hadn't been done before, which was a pretty smart idea here. So on this most outer level, researchers are asked to think more about their paradigm that they're using, their points of reference. What is it that they believe in before they even begin? So this is almost at a philosophical level. Researchers are asked to think, you know, how am I approaching this topic? Am I doing this from a critical feminism perspective or am I being a very pragmatic or realistic, right? At a second level, though, you have these approaches to reasoning. You know, how do you think about the world? So practically, what kind of reasoning am I going to use? Will it be deductive or inductive reasoning? So these are kind of broader questions which are really, really helpful over time. So for researchers, for example, writing a PhD dissertation or something, this is really fundamental because it really points to some of the belief systems that people have that influence or can bias some of the things that they find. So in our research within our course, we're going to be looking at this just to be aware of it. You don't have to really apply it, but to think a bit about it because we don't have enough time to really dig deep enough into think about this, but it is very important because we will talk about how some of the research findings that we look for um, are biased by our own belief systems. At the next level though, a little bit more inwards, are things that we call methods. And this is asking us to determine if we're going to be approaching the problem through a quantitative or a qualitative or a mixed method structure. Okay, so do I wanna measure something or do I wanna describe something? So basically coming to that decision before you launch into the research and collect data. So in order to collect data, you have to have a strategy or a design of how you're gonna do that. And what's so interesting is these break down into to basic tools. You know, am I gonna use a survey or am I going to do an experiment? Uh, shall I use a case study of an individual person, right? Um, if you use something like grounded theory, it's because you're thinking of something nobody else has thought of before and you're coming up with something from the ground up. You're basically collecting a lot of information and saying how this points to something new that hasn't been thought before. So these are strategies or research designs. And then at the next level, we have the big job of data collection. And we know there's a lot of errors that can occur as you collect data, and there's also a lot of errors that can occur when you analyze the data. So when you collect it, you really have to think about, you know, who, what, when, where, why, how am I going to get the information? So if I'm going to do the surveys, how is it going to be distributed? Um, how will I tabulate it, right? But then there's this next level of analyzing it, which is also very complicated. Once you've got that data and you've collected it, now, what are you going to do? Are you going to apply a formula to get a number or are you going to, you know, code all the words that the kids said to each other to be able to, to categorize the information? How will you approach the data collection and the data analysis? So these are the different layers of research that are indicated here. Now, it's clear that something, this is not a totally, even though it's complicated, it's not a complete uh, model because it is missing certain types of strategies or experimental designs. For example, another strategy or experimental design is looking at correlational studies, right? How two things might happen at the same time. Or looking at narrative studies, which are basically great descriptions of um, structures or contexts or how classrooms might look or whatever, right? But then there's also action research. And action research is a different kind of of design, uh, research design, that we're going to be focusing on today.